Hello everyone, welcome to this module. The title of this module is Sergei Eisenstein with special reference to his film Battleship Potemkin. Sergei Mikhailovich Eisenstein was one of the towering filmmakers in the erstwhile Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics, the USSR or the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union came into being in 1922 as the political output of the Russian Revolution which began in 1917. The proletarian or the working class philosophy and culture was given prominence in all the socio-cultural and political aspects of the newly created nation, the Soviet Union. Cinema was an important site of political and cultural contestation in the USSR. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, the founder of the Russian Communist Party and a frontline leader of the Russian Revolution, has famously remarked that, quote, film for us is the most important of the arts, unquote. The young nation was challenged with widespread poverty, illiteracy, and lack of political consciousness. Therefore, cinema was used to provide political and cultural education to the masses in the newly created Soviet Union. More than its entertainment value, the educational and propagandist potential of the cinema was made use of in the newly created socialist nation. Separate funds were sanctioned by the Commissariat for Education for making and organizing film shows using mobile cinema projection units under the political instruction of Lenin. The young Soviet filmmakers of the 1920s and 30s, Diziga Vertov, Sergei Eisenstein, Sevelod Mehol, Sevelod Pudovkin, and Alexander Dovzhenko experimented with the film medium to explore all its possibilities. In this process, they were able to bring in a new cinematic idiom, that is, Mondash. These filmmakers redrew the formal, narrative, and pedagogic protocols of the cinematic art. Learning objectives of this module are to enable the learner to sketch a brief profile of Sergei Eisenstein, the filmmaker, familiarize with the major films of Eisenstein, contextualize Eisenstein in the history of cinema, comprehend Mundash in the context of Eisenstein's filmography and watch, appreciate and critically analyze Eisenstein's films. Sergei Eisenstein was born in 1898. His parents were Mikhail Eisenstein, who was an architect, and Julia Koneskaya. By profession, Sergei Eisenstein was an architectural engineer. However, he joined the Red Army to serve the Bolshevik ideology later. After the success of the revolution, he moved to Moscow to work for Prolet Cult or the proletarian culture along with Sevelod Mayerhold in theater. With his essay of 1923 titled The Mondash of Attractions, Eisenstein's theorization of cinema began. As we have a dedicated module on Mandash in this course, in this lesson, Mandash will be given only a brief explanation. In this lesson, the English titles of Eisenstein's films and books are used. Important films of Eisenstein. Sergei Eisenstein's first film, Strike, 1925, was made just before the production of Battleship Potemkin in 1925. Strike was a silent film, the first full-length feature film of Eisenstein. It was originally planned as a seven-part film on the struggles of the proletariat and remained unfinished in six parts. The subject of the film Strike is the strike of the workers in Tsarist Russia before the revolution. His essay, 
The Mandash of Attractions was composed soon after this film's production. It opens with Lenin's statement that organization is the strength of the working class. The suppression of the workers by the police is intercut with the scenes of slaughter at a butcher's. The brutal violence and quelling is cinematically compared to animal slaughter creating a striking montage with a political impetus. It's also an example for intellectual montage. Eyes and Signs, October, 10 Days That Shook the World, 1928, is a brilliant filmic rendition of the 1917 Russian Bolshevik Revolution. Grigory Alexandrov is the co-director of this silent movie. It depicts the historical ouster of the Tsarist regime and the deconstruction of its administrative mansions by the people. The authorities asked to edit out the reference to Trotsky who was purged by Stalin and disagreed with its formal and structural subtleties. As it was commissioned by the Soviet regime, that changes were done by the director promptly. It's a perfect example of an ideal propaganda film and explains the agit prop model of the Soviet early cinema. The reenactment of the storming of the summer palace depicting Lenin and more than 10,000 people is a typical celebrated episode in the film. The General Line, 1925, another film by Sergei Eisenstein, is about the collectivization of the agricultural commons envisioned and pioneered by Leon Trotsky from the Bolshevik Revolution onwards. The tale of the rural folk is explored through the personal life story of a village girl, Martha. She and her rural comrades develop their farms into a collective unit and succeed with socialist and cooperative model of collective work. This film project began in 1927, was partially abandoned and later got completed in 1920 by then Leon Trotsky had become a bad icon and model for the Stalinist regime. Eisenstein had to re-edit and change the title to Old and New to get it released as per party terms. Decades later, film archives have restored the original framework of the director with a lot of montage sequences. In 1927, when the Mexican mural artist Diogo Rivero visited Russia, he praised the film of Eisenstein and kindled the interest in the filmmaker for the ancient Maya art and architecture. He was also inspired by the 1910 Socialist Revolution of Mexico. Eisenstein's Q Viva Mexico is an episodic film project began in 1930 that aimed to recreate the cultural and political history of Mexico from the Mayan times to the revolution. But he could not complete it and it was abandoned.
when he touched upon the cultural history of Russia, he came under severe surveillance and censorship. In 1938, Sergei Eisenstein made Alexander Nevsky that created the history of the Middle Ages as an allegory of the interim period in Europe with the Nazi Germany on the rise. Alexander Nevsky, the folk hero, resisting the Teutonic Knights of Roman Empire is a political statement against the Catholic and capitalist regime of Western Europe. It's also a historic critique of the Russian nobility and the mediating middle classes. This was followed by another epic film project on Russian culture and political history called Ivan the Terrible in three parts, but he could finish only the first two. The third part was banned and Russians were burned by the Russian socialist authoritarian state that commissioned it. Film Praxis or Film Praxis of Eisenstein. Film is distinguished from other art forms like theater, painting, literature or music through the unique formal feature of montage. Montage makes film distinctive. It's a kind of collage on the silver screen. Montage is a French word that means to assemble or to put together. It's a part of the editing technique in film and was perfected in the Soviet school or the Moscow School of Cinema led by Lev Kuleshev, Diziga Vertov and Sergei Eisenstein. These filmmakers, influenced by Marxism and the Russian Revolution, experimented with film images and the process of making meaning in the dialectical way by combining dissimilar shots. Therefore, the theory and practice of Mandash, also known as Marxist film theory and praxis. Kuleshov and Eisenstein argued that Mandash is the essence of cinema. Eisenstein was a theorist, pedagogue and creator, an artist and ideologue at the same time. He was deeply moved by the world of ideas and ideology. He was often using Lenin's ideals in his film theory, pedagogy and practice. But towards his mature film career, especially in the making of the second part of Ivan the Terrible, he moved beyond the rigid framework of dialectical materialism and confronted many problems with the Soviet censorship that he had become totalitarian by the early 1940s itself. The second part of this legendary 
trilogy dealing with the Russian cultural history and past social formations created many cuts and the third part was mostly destroyed and the project terminated. Eisenstein defined Mondash as the nerve of cinema, the salient feature of cinema's distinction from other art forms. When dissimilar images are combined together in film editing, it produces new meaning for the viewer. The Russian school theoretically explained it in terms of dialectical materialism in which thesis and antithesis came together and produced an entirely new dimension or meaning called synthesis. This was a revolution in the history of cinema and filmmaking and editing in particular. Sergei Eisenstein critically rejected the continuity editing that was prevalent in the mainstream, especially in the American model of D.W. Griffith during the early decades of the 20th century by calling it a bourgeois form of linear narration that faked reality. He focused instead on something called intellectual mondage. Lenin and other revolutionary Soviet leaders also promoted the Soviet film school project of mondage as it made the people think about filmmaking, the dialectical tension of images and it was a popular technique of mass appeal through which even the illiterate people could be moved in agitations and propaganda in the class struggle and revolution. Eisenstein is the major practitioner and theorist of the Mondash. He has made films in which the editing technique is successfully used and also written extensively on the theory of it in his books like Film Form, Essays in Film Theory 1949 and Film Sense 1947. For communicating powerful and suggestive political messages to the audience, he experimented with differing and contradictory images. He put them together in editing and created new connotations and suggestions in his films. Images and visual sequences of shots were juxtaposed and new unseen contrasts and conflicts were created as in the theory of the dialectics. The collision of images caused emotional outbursts and metaphorical efforts in the audience that created the unique experience of cinema. In this sense of poetics, Mandash is a cinematic metaphor or figure of sight, a visual cultural phenomenon. Eisenstein elaborately used various kinds of mondashes and perfected them in his films. The metrical, rhythmical, tonal, overtonal and intellectual mondashes abound his works. They are based on the interplay of cuts, contents, shades, images and a mixer of all these elements in the visual narrative constructing or suggesting new dimensions of meaning and political message is called intellectual or ideological mondage. In films like Strike and Battleship Patenkin, both in 1925, he elaborately used these methods of techniques and captivated the audiences and the critics. In the 1925 film Strike, the scenes of suppression of the worker struggle by the military is contrasted or intercut with the shots of the slaughter of a cow 
by butchers. It created a contrast and analogy that is almost metaphorical and created suggestions against the brutal oppression of the ruling class on the striking proletariat. It conveyed a political or ideological message to the audience and is an example of intellectual montage. Similarly, in Battleship Potemkin, he used the rising image of the sleeping lion statue to suggest the rising of the workers against the Tsarist regime. The famous Odessa steppe scene is the most typical one illustrating the use of mandaches of various kinds. Eisenstein used metrical or tempo-oriented montage, rhythmical or visual rhythm-oriented montage, tonal or the contrast of scenes with varying tones of light and shade, and a mixture of all these three called overtonal montage effectively in the Battleship Potemkin. The historic value of Battleship Potemkin in 1905 the soldiers and crew on the imperial battleship of Russia called Potemkin revolted against its officers and naval chiefs. The 1925 film Battleship Potemkin by Eisenstein commemorate this revolutionary event against the Tsarist imperial regime by the working class in cinematically powerful and dramatic ways. It's the most important film in Eisenstein's career and in the history of the Russian and world cinema as it employed various forms of montage, especially the intellectual one. He composed the film as a propagandist one and at the same time experimented with his dialectical theory of Mandash in it elaborately. So the form and content of the film, its medium and message are woven into one another very closely with the dialectical tension and conflicts. It's also a unique example of Marxist cinema and its various vision of history, polity, and society. Battleship Potemkin was produced by Moss Film, which was a state film studio founded in 1920. Battleship Potemkin, a black and white film with a duration of 70 to 75 minutes, is presented in five distinct episodes with separate titles for each episode. The five episodes are Men and Maggots, Drama in the Deck, A Dead Man Calls for Justice, The Odessa Steps, and The Meeting with the Squadron. Battleship Potemkin is considered to be a cinematic preamble for the Russian Revolution, which would occur 12 years later. The film is about the cruelties the common soldiers and ordinary citizens had to face under the Tsarist regime, which was finally overthrown in 1917 by the Bolshevik Revolution. The first episode of Battleship Potemkin features Vakulinchak, a sailor on board the Battleship Potemkin of the Imperial Russian Navy, in the central role. He initiates and leads the agitation against the top-ranking naval officers in the Potemkin for treating the sailors of the ship in the most inhuman manner. The sailors anchor against providing them with rotten meat develops into an armed clash on board of the naval ship. Finally, the soldiers overpower the officers. However, Vaklinchuk 
has lost his life in the clash. Amongst these five episodes, the Odessa Steps is considered to be the most perfect emotional dramatic episode that features heavily armed Cossacks, crying women, innocent children, invalidated citizens unfolding in a dynamic setting of the Odessa Steps. Battleship Potemkin is one of the most successful propaganda films ever made. Assuming the notion of star, Eisenstein makes the mass, the ordinary people or the crowd in the street the central character of the film. Its heavily emotional content, featuring of defenseless citizens, presentation of the armed to teeth repressive military force etc. made the film a huge hit internationally. The film faced censorship actions including total banning in many countries like the USA, France and the United Kingdom at various times. Critique of Mondash Andre Bazan, the French film critique and theorist, has raised a criticism that the intellectual Mondash is too constructive and could become a fascist narrative if not questioned or deconstructed by the viewer or critic. The tyranny of the narrative makes cinema prone to fascism and dictatorship. Whether it's done in the course of the revolution or liberation, the ideology of the film needs critical viewing, questioning and dialogical evaluation in socio-cultural and political contexts. The need of polyphonic dialogism within the narrative rather than dialectics is foregrounded in this remarkable critique by Andre Bazon. Dialectical materialism and its filmic theory and praxis also requires such timely and rational understanding and critique. Thank you for watching this video.